Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Hello and you're very welcome to Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. I'm Paddy McKenna. As you can see, Baz is away today touring the world with his rock and roll band. But he did leave a key under the mat and he asked me to check in on Trimby. So, Trimby, you, you are, are you eating properly? So you're fading away. Oh really? Yeah. Well, Barry's not here to look Spain. after me. Uh huh. I am. Yeah. I'm. I'm struggling. I've missed him. I must say. Yeah. Um, you. I've gone very well so far. Oh you have yeah. Very large shoes to fill. <laughs> last Size week. Size fourteen. Yeah. Last week we were sitting number one in Ireland in yeah. the sports and recreation category. Mm -hmm. So, let's see what happens, will we? We are everything about this podcast show. I should say is. It says recreation to me. Like it's, yeah, it's just yeah. sport is covered, but recreation is a yeah. harder one to get, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, Mar I was on the phone to Mark Robson there actually during the week because he was giving me a hard time after slagging him last week, and he said, "Would you consider talking about rugby at any stage?" Good. So we we touch on the sport, but mostly recreation. There was one stage last week actually we went on a tangent, probably similar to this one we're about to go on now, mm. and um, Pat, director pa uh, Pat, Proddy Pat. Held up a piece of paper that said rugby on it <laughs> <laughs> and pointed yeah, yeah. to it. <laughs> I was Which, there for that moment. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed that. You I got the that. message though. Um, well, yeah, well, later on we will be talking, uh, we'll be talking rugby. We're going to be joined by Irish Women's Rugby Grand Slammer, Jenny Murphy, to get stuck into the Guinness series. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be finding out who our Made and More Player of the Weekend is, and we'll be picking at least one team to face the mighty All Blacks. And we'll be picking a team. Jenny's going to be picking a team. We'll mm -hmm. see where they overlap. Yeah, we're going to debate that. Um, it's gonna get we're gonna get fired up. Fired up, man. Uh -huh. High up and low down. But look, there's really only one place to start, though, Trimby. It's Jordan Larmer and those incredible dancing feet. Let's have a look at this. Cooney assesses the options. Larmer is one of those. Oh, and he's away here, Larmer. He's got another one to beat. He's around to Baldy, and he may well get a hat trick as he dances his way past the last line of cover. And there is simply no stopping Jordan Larmer. Those incredible feet. All right, Trimby, Jordan Lammer, three tries, no missed tackles and assists for Luke McGrath, 249 metres gained off 11 carries and 12 defenders beaten. He did all right. He, yeah, he went all right. He did yeah. okay. Yeah, he did all right, and he got uh, a lot of high praise from Joe after the game as well. So at the end, I just think the Italian defenders were just knackered and they just wanted to go home. I think there were 16 people wanted him to get tackled at the end. All of the Italians and John Cooney just <laughs> wanted him just to get scragged and pop it up to him until he gets over there over the try line but he is some talent isn't he he's just just electric his footwork's incredible his pace is par three uh, three tries and one assist as well for for Luke McGrath he was on fire has there ever been a better stepper than Larmer in Irish rugby I mean like I mean there's been some great steppers going back yeah. to Mike Gibson Simon Gagan that's going way back but obviously Bod I mean like is he the best since Bod or is he even better than Bod in terms of like how he steps off either foot. I think in, in terms of that one category. Yes, that he, one thing. He's certainly up there. You 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 do well to find anybody who is as quick. Maybe Luke Fitzgerald back in his day. Yeah. Maybe Earlsy. Um. Maybe Craig Gilroy. His footwork. Um. There's a, there's a handful of lads, but he's certainly up there in terms of his acceleration as well, his footwork, and just um. He's just such a threat. I think just. Defenders just kind of roll their eyes when they see him getting going. Um, now, I suppose you could look at that game. It was against the second string Italian side, and it wasn't really test match intensity. So after that game, you're sort of going, well, what have we learned? And we haven't really learned anything. We knew he was talented. We knew he had incredible footwork. We knew he was um, PSE powerful, X factor. But we haven't learned anything else in terms of his contribution to that kind of test match arena. So people, people are, I think, are getting a little bit carried away talking about him playing against the All Blacks. Uh, and I know we'll get into this later on, but for me, um, Rob Carney's still there. He's not getting close <coughs> now. He's certainly putting himself in the picture for being kind of to take over from Rob once Rob eventually slows down. But this has happened a number of times. People have written off Rob Carney, I don't know how many times. And uh, coincidentally, it was two years ago against the All Blacks. He had been written off before and he got picked for that game. And that was the game when he showed that he still had it. And I think he's still got it now. Um, but yeah, Jordan Armour, um, in terms of kind of for that, that cover, second second string kind of, if, if something happens, Rob Carney, heaven forbid, 
Jordan Lomer certainly put his hand up um, to get in the mix there. Well, will we start with the least that he can expect. Is he? I mean, is he the? Is he the cover? Is he in the twenty three? Is he in the twenty three for the All Blacks game? I'd say so. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, there's a, another <laughs> fairly high intensity um, test match in between now and then. Okay. But. Um, and he's Joe, done I, enough for that. I think so. Yeah, I think. Well, at the minute, anyway, he's done all he can do at the minute. I think Joe kind of subtly hinted at that, and that he wanted him to get a bit of exposure on the wing and at fullback. And again, Joe, I think, is impressed by the footwork and the X factor. But he he drew attention to the fact that he received that high ball well. He did the basics well, uh, and there were a couple of things about the backfield cover and shape and appreciation, whenever the opposite opposition are, are are in possession. So. Joe is way more concerned about that stuff and that's test match stuff. Yeah, Joe does seem to be still unsure as to whether he's a fullback or a wing at the moment. Um, he mentioned the fact that, and I think he scored, I think he was on the wing when he scored the two, re the marquee tries. Um, mm. He'd switched onto the wing for the <laughs> last 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, well, he, he was at fullback when he made the intercept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the strangest try of all time. Yeah. Who who comes up and plucks, up an, uh, plucks an intercept coming from the backfield? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It was unbelievable. It was a strange pass from Campagnaro. But anyway, yeah, I think Joe is kind of just setting the scene for him getting a bit of exposure elsewhere so that he can cover a few places so that he's, he's, he's got that security of him uh, off the bench. Having played both the positions yourself um, and right across the back line, like the leap to come from a wing to, to make it as a full back, I mean, how close <coughs> is he to being a starting full back for Ireland? All things been equal. I understand obviously Carney is still in possession of the jersey. We'll get to that in a moment. But like, I I is he closer than ever? Uh... He's closer than ever, but he's still not that close. I don't think. I think he could. He could do a great job against the All Blacks, but he might not be able to do a Rob Carney job. I think it's still it's still a big step up. You can't you can't compare um, playing a second string Italy side in Chicago to the All Blacks at the Aviva. It's not the same thing. But he's done everything he can possibly do to climb the ladder to be as good as he can be. Um, but still. Joe likes Rob Carney. Joe likes someone who, who he kind of knows what he's going to get. He's going to be good in the air. He's going to kick the ball well. He's going to look at like appreciate space in the backfield. Mm. He's going to do basics really, really well, better than anyone, in fact. And uh, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. Like, in fairness, we'll get getting stuck into the the Lammer over Carney debate, which, as you rightly say, there was a clamor on social media over the weekend. Well, like this guy, he just just get him in, mm. get him in now. He has to start. And when mm -hmm. you see something as like as incredible as the, the footwork and the tries that he scored against Italy, even though it's Italy, you, like there is a temptation just to think, look, let's let's throw caution to the wind. But when you get into the stats, it is interesting, uh, as you mentioned, <coughs> Proddy, Proddy Pat, our yeah. producer, or Pat the, Pat the Stat McCarry, <laughs> um, has come up with these stats. So in in 14, so Larmer scored 14 tries in 35 games, right, since his debut. And Carney's actually similar in that regard. In his first 30 games, mm -hmm. he scored 13 tries. But interestingly, Carney's only had one try in his last 79 games. That goes back to September 2014. And he hasn't scored a try for club or province for two years. And that one try in 79 is also for Ireland and for Leinster. So like he's going through what you could only describe as... yeah. Pretty horrendous try drought. That's, at the a, that's a desert. That is <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the Atacama right yeah. there. In fairness, <laughs> yeah. Um, you you couldn't not be if you're sitting there as Rob Carney, you couldn't be watching that and feel safe. Feel your 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 position's locked down. <sighs> yes, but he's not. I'm not saying his stats have been there before, but he's been in this position before where he's got a bit of heat. He's got a bit of pressure. Guys have talked about other young fellas coming through with a bit of X factor. And he's always stepped up and he's always took the next opportunity that came his way. He just performs like he, we're, we're so kind of used to him performing. I don't think Joe cares about, um, not that he doesn't care about try scoring, but he cares an awful lot more about execution under pressure, getting the ball contesting, making tackles in the backfield, um, making correct decisions with ball in hand, all those small little things that contribute to a big test match performance. And that's the stuff that Rob Carney does well. And I know I'm harping on about this. Like Jordan Larmer is an incredible athlete. He's so so talented, and I think he he's put himself as close as he possibly can to Carney. But I still think um, Joe knows what he's going to get from Carney at the Test match level. We had uh, Connor Murray on the show last week. Um, <coughs> Baz memorably chatted to him. Started off who's, by who's Baz? Who's Baz? <laughs> <laughs> last week's newsman. Yeah. Last week's news. Yeah, he had a good innings. Rest in R peace. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Um, 
uh, he started off by uh, talking about uh, Murray's mum. I don't think I would get away with that if I started <laughs> off with that particular question, what Faz did. But what was more interesting, uh, to be fair, speaking about rugby, um, is Murray talked about the way to beat the All Blacks, and he said the only way to beat them is to attack them. It's like, if they have the ball, then you're in trouble. Yeah. And if you have the ball, at least you can affect the game. It sounds pretty simple. But if that's going to be your philosophy, and if that's the way the team are going to play against the All Blacks in a couple of weeks' time, then surely it is Jordan Larmour that you start to full back and not Rob Kearney. Uh, it's, it's not. A, I mean, holding on to the ball is, is, is not the same thing as kind of the, the stuff that Jordan Larmour does. Now, I'm not saying Joe doesn't want line breaks. He doesn't want offloads. He doesn't want people getting, getting done with footwork. Of course he does. But what he kind of values, it sounds strange to say what he values more than that, is someone who makes good decisions on the ball. And holding on to the ball can be making the pass at the right time, carrying the ball hard, looking after the ball on the ground. It's all the stuff that's not that sexy. You know, it's kind of just really basic stuff, but that's what wins test matches. And I think Joe knows, certainly Joe knows more than anybody how to win a test match. Yeah, it was interesting actually that you mentioned that, like the, the, the not so sexy stuff, because I think that's the stuff that Larmer has been criticised about in the past, is that, you know, there's nuts and bolts of his game that needs to tighten up. It's probably any young guy that comes into the game, he has this incredible, explosive talent that at underage level you're going to hone and you're going to play against guys that are nowhere near your level. And as you get into the senior men's game and you hit the highest level, if you don't have those <coughs> n all those nuts tightened, then yeah. you, <coughs> you have a problem. But actually after the game, Joe Smith had actually complimented... Larmer on, yeah. he said the unseen things. Yeah, he was really like, it's funny. Like we're all watching, going, oh, the footwork's incredible. It looks yeah. like he's got hinges on his ankles, basically, or the way he's gone <laughs> yeah. around uh, Campanaro at the end. But actually, Joe Smith's more is more pleased with the stuff that us mere mortals don't even see. Yeah, exactly. and he actually took the moment to to pick that out because he knows how important that is. He but I wonder, does that mean that Larmer does have a chance of starting a fullback? Like that, Joe Smith is beginning to say to him, like through the media, saying. You're doing what I, I need you to do. You're, stand, you're actually, not just in terms of like these flashy tries, but in terms of the bread and butter, which is we all know is if you don't do that for Joe Smith, you will not be in the team. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, putting up, he's put himself in the picture for it, but I still don't think, he, I don't think he's there. I don't think if, if, if you go down to the bookies and try and get odds on, on who's going to start at 15, it's going to be Carney all day, all day long. He's saying that Jordan Larmer could do a really good job in there. But doing a really good job isn't the same as doing what Rob Carney's done mm. for years. And it, I, th I suppose he's saying he's competent as well. If he's on the bench, if he comes on and he gets a little bit more exposure than he had anticipated, if Carney gets an injury, if he plays 40 minutes, 50 minutes, he could come on and do a really good job. Mm -hmm. um, but doing a really good job, there's a number of teams have done a really good job against the All Blacks and still come off second best. Um, <coughs> do you remember, like obviously, Rob Carney is in the latter stages of his career and this guy has come on the scene. As you say, so many times there's been, Rob Kearney's been written off and he's come right back and he's done, in, like played incredibly well for Ireland, putting aside the try scoring and all that kind of stuff. From your own point of view, do you remember like that moment where you first clapped eyes on, let's say, Jacob Stockdale and you thought, okay, this guy looks pretty hot? Yeah, well my thoughts were, okay, <laughs> I'm in trouble here. <laughs> 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 this young fellow's handy enough. Um, I spotted, I spotted it obviously earlier, slightly earlier than everyone else, because we were sort of starting to get an appreciation of this young fella coming through, and there's no, there's no weakness in his game. You know, he's kind of tall, he's rangy, he's athletic, his skills are good. He kind of reads the game pretty well. We're going, the, the the writing's on the wall here. I'm looking at Tommy, and Tommy's looking at me, going. Please, <laughs> please let it be you. <laughs> please let it be you and Amazing. not me. Um, so you're kind of you're playing for a medal at that stage. You're not you're not playing to be the best winger in Ulster. You're playing to be the second best winger in Ulster. <laughs> whenever someone like Jacob Stockdale comes through, um, and then he had a massive preseason uh, summer before last, uh, and I thought he looked. He came back after the tour of um, New York, USA, and New York, and then two Test matches in Japan. And he came back in the preseason, and he looked like he just picked up where he left off. He looked fit. He looked fast. He just looked full of confidence, and it looked like it was no surprise that he was going to have the season he had. Now this season, then you're looking at it going, well, it 
although granted it, well it's kind of his third season really mm. but last year was such a big season that there was the temptation to expect second season syndrome which I think he he's only played um, four games so three games for Ulster and then the, the game of the weekend there and any the the with the closest game to what looked like a test match really the Italian game d didn't have that intensity the Leicester game at, at Kingspan I thought had that kind of level it was it was a bit drizzly and it was a bit bit minging it was a bit of an arm wrestle and I thought he looked really composed really mature he just looked like an experienced um Irish international and I thought he looked like a guy who'd spent time with Joe Schmidt and uh and Farrell I thought he looked like a guy who just has been small little things those elements of the game we're talking about that Joe complimented mm. Jordan Armour on those are the elements of the game that I thought Jacob stepped up again I don't think he was that poor I think journalists tend to think they're being a bit creative or a bit um you know, thinking outside of the box oh he's scoring tries for fun okay they think right let's find let's find something then to balance it up and I think that's a little bit of f a little bit fake because um you'll exaggerate something mm. just to be you know kind of journalistic and unbalanced I think there were one or two little things there that just weren't quite as you're remarkable one, you're one of us now by the way huh you're on our team now uh, no I'm still <laughs> I'm still one of the boys so it's your turn <laughs> gamekeeper <laughs> I'm one of the boys funny <laughs> <laughs> but um I just thought he looks like he stepped up spent some time in that international arena and he just looked <coughs> like an experienced international now a, w a lot of people did wonder thought maybe your yours and Tommy's retirements were pretty abrupt but now we know <laughs> it's Jacob Stockton is to yeah. blame <laughs> yeah I mean that's some going isn't it I mean it's he retired to <laughs> two of us <laughs> two 50 plus he, international he only takes, players he only takes the place of one of us <laughs> yeah. why are we both going <laughs> he did an absolute job on yeah, us yeah he just wanted to really humiliate you both um, and just to finish up with Larmer for this for, for this section I'm sure we'll be talking about him lots you I, I watched <coughs> you on Air Sport uh -huh. uh, it's our first time to see you because in Premier Sports in, in the North, we don't get that down here. Jeez, you hit us up there, don't <laughs> you? <laughs> you don't even watch we just block TV. a man. It's not, it's not even geo block. <laughs> we block it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, there's a yeah. hard border on Premier yeah. Sports. <laughs> um, no, you, uh, you, wore, you wore a lovely blue suit. Thanks. Thanks. It looked like a wedding suit, was it? It wasn't your wedding suit, was it? It was. I've worn it at a wedding, yeah. Okay. I actually got not it your own wedding, though. No. Okay. <laughs> I got a I got a tweet saying um, it looks like Andrew Trimble's just made his confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> it did have uh, yeah. it's just lovely suit. Thanks. Lovely thanks. Suit. It's uh, um it's a bit of a shame that it's it's a little bit uh, more noticeable. So I can only wear that suit maybe it, once or twice. Statement. More. Yeah, a statement that you can only do yeah. once or twice. And then I got to go back to top it's man. It's like J Lo wearing <laughs> that green throw. You know the one that's broken the internet over the weekend oh no i didn't it's see like it. a drape i've got kids i don't watch J Lou. right well she's, she's she broke the internet over the weekend well last week and uh it's one of those you, you know it's a statement it's a yeah. statement piece you can't wear it more than so, you'll yeah. get two or three out of it but then people will start saying oh jim's yeah. wearing his confirmation me on air sport is the same as J Lou. <laughs> <laughs> just know i i did have a point there which was when you were chatting on air sport about Larmer, you were you've you've played you've played with them are you you've encountered him on a rugby field um I or you've seen him up close. You were you were oh talking yeah. about. I've definitely trained trained with. Trained I'm with not him, yeah. sure I've played against him. Okay, but you were when he was about eighteen or nineteen. You were saying that you you trained with him. Yeah, I, you know, I think he might have been even younger. I think he might have just finished school. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He could have been in school, but um, they were talking about this young fella. He actually he just arrived, and then he just looked so dynamic, so powerful, and then we were kind of going, "What's the story with this fella?" Then someone said, "Oh, he's just been brought in because you know he, he he's unbelievably talented and <laughs> there potentially could be a big future for him." Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, he got a hard time. There's one or two one or two lads he he ran through. So it's not it's not touch rugby, but it's kind of shoulders on a little bit. But it's not full on either. And um, there'd be lads, you know, saying, "You know, I had him, I had him there." <laughs> you know, completely <laughs> bluffing. I had him there, Joe. And then um, someone had to have a word with him. Stop, stop running on whenever the lads have you. And then there was this look and he was sort of going, they didn't have me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And that makes sense now. No one ever has him really. <laughs> but um, yeah, he even back then he just looked so dynamic and uh, just exactly the way he looked at the weekend. It's interesting because the comparisons to Brian O'Driscoll are there. Um, Larmer obviously was an Andrews, Andrews boy. Uh, he would have played schools rugby for. But didn't have that kind of like fanfare about his school's rugby career. Mm -hmm. but, but it's interesting to hear that Lammer was actually heralded um, during Apparently, his Apparently, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although, 
how many? Uh, there's a lot of Leinster schoolboys coming through, and they're all yeah. the next brand of Driscoll. They're pretty well. There's been a lot of a lot of that's been probably said a couple of times now. Yeah. But um, it's fair to say after this weekend and everything we've seen over the last year or so that Larmer does look to be an incredible talent. Tough and fair. It is tough to put him against Brian O'Driscoll, but when you do see something like that try, the final try against Italy over the weekend, it's hard not to. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he would thank you for it either. I don't think so. I think um, so, uh, Gary Ringrose was often compared <laughs> to yeah, Brian yeah. O'Driscoll. <laughs> fair. And then I'd say every time he heard that, he was rolling his eyes going, can I please yeah. just be Gary? Because <laughs> there's a big shoes to fill. True. As big as Baz is size 14s. <laughs> um, Owen Farrell, the all or nothing tackle on South African sub, Andra Esterheisen. Uh, rest in peace yeah. he's, he's more dead than Barry <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an horrendous tackle uh, it, was, it was a definite what do you mean, do you mean horrendous you're, you're doing the journalist thing here it was, well, you're trying I to beat me into like, agreeing with you and then that'll be the quote Andrew I Trimble thought, says like, horrendous I didn't play I didn't play to any level Andrew I just I mean, <laughs> really? you might be surprised to hear that <laughs> but I thought in rugby you're supposed to tackle around the legs or the ankles I thought that was the whole point of tackling What's with this kind of standing up and like, I know a lot of people have defended actually, um, Farrell for the for the tackle, yeah, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But it's not a tackle really, is it? When you just stand up and push your shoulder towards a man without lifting your arms. Well, he did lift his arms. He he went to wrap the arms, and only your man went backwards so quickly that his arms didn't get there in time. But I think the, his arms were on their way. <laughs> mm, yeah, his arms okay. were, were just delayed slightly I think they were on their way and I think I think it's marginally so his arms are, I think there's no issue with the arms and I think what could potentially be an, is an issue is if if he connects an inch higher literally an inch higher and he's taken that fella's head off having said that for me I don't think there's anything wrong with the tackle and I think the only reason it's being talked about is first of all because it was close to being uh, on the chin but it wasn't. So the only reason it's being talked about <coughs> is because it was such a powerful collision. He absolutely nailed the fella. And I think I think it was legal. 100% I think it was legal. Um, I just It was so dynamic, so powerful. And he hit him so hard. And the guy went down so quickly that it, it's a talking point, especially in light of a lot of the recent kind of concussions. Well, that's it. It does, it's not dissimilar to some of the other ones we've seen recently <coughs> where there has been yellow cards. Yeah, but there has to be a line somewhere. You can't say a, a tackle gets increasingly dangerous as you go up the body. That's not the case. It's, it's dangerous if it's on the neck or the chin, and it's not dangerous if it's on the chest. There has to be a point when it's, it's legal or not legal, and for me, that one was literally by an inch legal. But an inch, though. Like, how much control does it he have? It probably was. You know, you're probably right. It probably was a little bit careful. There's no way he intended that to be that close yeah, to being it's, it's the worst tackle of all time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if he, if he lands... He could decapitate. I know. Man. If he lands on the chin there, if he gets that slightly wrong, he probably has got it slightly wrong. He probably hit him slightly higher than he expected to. But if he goes an inch higher again, he is getting banned. That's that's a six-month <laughs> six ban. I don't know what way the ban and like, what the, the minimum for a high tackle like I don't know what that is to be honest I'm just making that up but that is going to be a serious he's in serious bother if, if that lands on the chin um, he hasn't been cited though so no, obviously South Africans so, are yeah. happy enough with that yeah that's it well why is, it, is that the way it works do they complain to the I don't know what the process is well um, I maybe would say back, <laughs> back channels and whatever else yeah okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, he hasn't been cited though that's, yeah. that's, that's the first and thing fair enough I, d I don't think it's even a penalty um, we'll finally just for this section we'll talk about Luke McGrath um, just off the back of uh, the weekend's game obviously a lot of focus on the number 9 position still some rumours that Conor Murray may or may not just <laughs> surely not parachute him but in well, let's just take it that Conor Murray isn't going to line out against the All Blacks do you think he did enough with that performance against Italy to be well, first of all, the Murray. List, the first of all, the Murray thing. I think Ireland will be better off if Murray doesn't play. Uh, both both Ireland and Murray, because he hasn't had a break. He hasn't. He's got a big kind of six months or twelve months ahead of him. He's Ireland's. You know, between him and Sexton, probably their the most important player. And he's a the guy they need to have fit. They need to have a big twelve months ahead, and mm. he needs to be performing well. So him having this break now will be really good for Ireland and good for Munster. Uh, and good for the World Cup opportunity. Um, what else will be good for Ireland will be the opportunity to find out who's second choice because there's, there's not, not that there's no point investing in other guys. There is, of course, because you can always pick up injuries and it's good to have that depth, but it'd be nice to have clarity on who, 
who to really focus on coming in as second choice. So at the minute, we've got a little bit of exposure there, a bit of an appreciation of how good Luke was at the weekend. He went really well, I thought. Um, but again, going really well against uh, a second string Italy side mm -hmm. doesn't really tell us much. It tells us about as much as, as it told us about Jordan Larmer. He's talented. He's a good operator. The same is definitely true for Luke. He's a very good player. Um, but we didn't really find out much. This weekend, if Marmion comes in, if Marmion or Cooney, I'm not sure. If the chat is Marmion. That's what everybody seems to be talking about. The thing is, if everybody's talking about that, then Joe might just <laughs> do something <laughs> different. Um, but it looks like Marmion's going to get a go there. And if, if Marmion puts in a like-for-like like performance mm -hmm. that Luke put in at the weekend, then I think just the fact that Marmion does the same performance against Argentina is going to trump uh, Luke in that performance against Italy for me. Well, we'll see if you pick him in your uh, team to face the All Blacks a little bit later on in the show. And indeed, coming up, we're going to be joined by Ireland star Jenny Murphy as we look ahead to Ireland's Guinness Series games against Argentina, New Zealand and USA. Back after this. Your reaction? Who were those two? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know. Phil Trimble, he's a good lad. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of chat I would expect from him. I have a question for Haskell. Go on. Um, uh, James, is it true that you um, do a, a great Rob Howley impression? And if you do, we'd love to hear it. As if he's gone there. I did, I did actually pre-warn you. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like insulting. Right. He's actually done me there really well. Now I'm delighted to say that Leinster and Ireland star Jenny Murphy joins us on the, the House Rugby sofas, which are... They're very comfortable, Jenny, aren't they? They're, they're Andrew was giving out earlier on that they were a bit too deep. No, I think they're a, little, they're a little soft. It's first world problems, but <laughs> for me, this is a little soft. This is not, I'm, I'm like kind of, we see you've got long upper limbs and maybe we've got like longer lower limbs. So uh -huh. it's actually, I can sit into it and I can, my feet are limbs. hitting the ground. Like, That's so what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Trimby has freakishly long arms. Oh, I've, yeah. She's been I've, teed up. Yeah, she's I've, been, she's I've, been I've been told, yeah. yeah. They're, uh, that's like a pre-made jacket or I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know, you're right, yeah. it is. Yeah. There's, yeah. Extras, like there's an extra like six inches of cuffs 100%, on yeah, it. 100%, yeah, the mum had to cut. Extend and then yeah. yeah. I definitely thought by episode four, we would have stopped talking about my long arms. We'll never stop talking. But about it's your still long up arms there, yeah. yeah. And especially with Barry not being here, but <coughs> Barry <coughs> lives, Barry incarnate. Yeah. So Murphy's helped Murphy's. He gave me some like key points to hit on uh -huh. while he was away. So one of them was like mention his ridiculous arms. Yeah. No, so it's box it's checked. Become, it's yeah. become an unofficial feature. <coughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Of the, of the podcast. <laughs> Um, uh, are you a, are you a fan of the show? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, fe I feel like this I'm here. Is so well, like, you know, that's not a qu like I know <laughs> you're learning journalism, it is, but that's it is. not a question that's you like, ask. That's like being like, oh, I just think I'm a good room pair. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're in search of a compliment here. Yes, you're guys. I think we're like top in the sports. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, number yeah, one. So quality chat. Last week, number one. <laughs> and if we're num number one this week, then then yeah, well. Patting myself or... Are we going to blue? Jenny, look, we're really glad to have you in. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Guinness Series. Before we get stuck into that, how's the knee? Um, pretty bad injury, the ACL. Yeah, so did um, did the whole shebang, a couple of couple of things as well. So it was ACL and then all the other letters kind of as well. So facing the wrong way. Um, but it's getting there. So it's just long. Like normally, ACL, you're kind of aiming for maybe eight, nine months, but with this, it's just taken, it's taken a bit longer, but I kind of thought this is, I might never play again. And now um, like good news that I've got some targets to go for. So I'll hopefully be able to get a rugby ball back in my hand at some stage aiming for early 2019. But if not, like it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, I've had injuries before, so it's on the, on the right path. So how, long, how long has that been so far? I uh, did it February 17th. Um, so it's been it's been a few months already, yeah. So it'll yeah. be a full year. It'll probably be out nearly the full year. Okay, yeah. Um, for sure, that's that's rugby anyway. Like it's contact sport. Do you miss it? How how are you feeling your time? Um, I I, I do miss it. I'm started coaching um mm -hmm. a women's senior team as well. So I'm getting a lot from that as well. You do you do kind of pick up stuff. Like I think even as a player, it's really but beneficial. Um, and as well as that, you can still kind of enjoy the game. Now it's different. I obviously. I'm really looking forward to go back and you do miss that match day buzz and like, you know, going to the gym with the girls and like you're having that bit of crack. But when you're in rehab mode, 
um, you're on your own all the time. So it's it's kind of in your own time that you're in the gym rehabbing away. So it's it does get a bit kind of lonely, I guess. Do you, do you get as much support as the men in terms of rehab and physio treatment and all that kind of stuff? Um, we see I, I did my injury in an AIL club game. Uh -huh. So like any other AIL player, you're not you're not kind of covered unless it's a very serious injury like um, paralysis. Um, so you're not your physio and stuff isn't isn't covered surgery all that kind of stuff that's you sort that out yourself yeah okay yeah, well, so that, does that account then for the fact that you're slightly behind schedule or slightly um, longer layoff than you I know I've been I've been really lucky um, <laughs> I've worked on John Ryan um, one of the doctors really helped me out of a tough spot and kind of got me seen by an exceptional surgeon um, and he kind of he did that himself um, I think if I if I didn't get his help, I would have been even further behind. So, like, and I know what has to be done anyway. I've had long term injuries before, so yeah. you just have to be consistent and think short term goals. And then eventually, like, so you'll have like my nerdy gym diary, and you have like your pathetic scores at the start. And when you're you look back, you're like, I'm not making any gains. And if you flip back five pages, like, oh, I actually am. So like, because yeah. sometimes it's a it's more of a mental thing, I guess. At times, it is a roller coaster, and um, but. Like, listen, I've been wrecking my friends' heads. The girls have been great. So I'm still hoping to be back. But yeah, like you, do, you get different physios, but like the ones I've got, I've been really lucky, have been exceptional. Have you have you gone gone back and watched games and uh, have you found yourself in that kind of slightly awkward balanced position where you, you want the team to go well, but you want whoever it is wearing 12 or 13 <sighs> not to go quite so well? I, I, I don't know. Like it's, he kind of... I was watching it, I was watching the Six Nations and their November tests are coming up now, USA and England. And like, yeah, you want the girls to win and you want them to play to, to play well and perform. But there is, there's a little in your head, a little bit, and you have to stop yourself because you're like, oh, I'm being a knob. Like, yeah. there is that bit like, oh, and I think a lot of it is a confidence thing. It's like, I could do that or maybe in that situation, this is what I would have done. But like, you're, you're kind of killing yourself. And I think as well, the girls that are playing in the centre position, they've got different strengths than I do. <coughs> so we can offer Adam Griggs yeah. something different. So I think that's what I'm that's what I'm kind of going back to as well. Um, but there there is a slight slight bit of that in your head, but then you catch yourself and you're like, no, that's yeah, it's not like do, do you text them before the game? Good luck. Uh, break a leg. <laughs> yeah. Get, inside, get <laughs> like inside their heads. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that 28 minutes, remember when you dropped that ball there? <laughs> Yeah, just try not to do that again, and you'll be grand. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I don't. I don't do me, you haven't. You haven't. You wouldn't ever watch on and think, God, I hope this guy drops a ball. No. No, you never. No, you don't think that, but you do think. I don't want you to play badly, but I don't want you to play that well. Okay. I think. I think Jenny's right. You, I don't want you to do anything that that I couldn't do. I suppose. Or I just want I just don't want to be forgotten, <laughs> right? That's why That's it, isn't it? You just don't want to be forgotten. Yeah. That's yeah. why Rob Carney was just watch Jordan Larmer and just like Oh, you have got something just, for Jordan Larmer I today. Yeah, see I'm like I think like Larmer is exceptional, unbelievable talent and with the skills that he have, he's but same way, I I'd still pick Carney every day of the week at the moment. Like he's and if you ask any of the players around him as well, it, it's not just that, it's players that have played with him when they're like, no, Kearney, that says a huge amount too. He's so consistent, which is something that like, I think Joe has like wants in a player. You, you know that you're going to get a solid performance out of Kearney and he's going to do the right things at the right moment under huge amounts of pressure. Like that, and at fullback, it's a high pressure uh, position and to have that kind of solid safety net and like intelligence going forward as well like you can't can't really put a price on that and they're different players as well they offer different things i really i really feel like the battle lines are drawn here it's like uh, yeah. it's the ex pros and the pros and the current internationals saying it's currently every day of the week and it's the nefarious media <laughs> clamoring for Jordan <laughs> Lambert is, to is, be included yeah. and you're, you're and Rob Carney cast to one side yeah. who was it rob who <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to put word. You're trying to bring us on board as well, and we're standing strong. Yeah, yeah. I like. Uh, I'm pushing I, I'm Jordan Lambert. Like, right yeah. 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 And Lambert's <coughs> unbelievable talent. Like, but yeah, Carney for those big games, like he he doesn't disappoint at all. He's yeah, I, nothing against Armour, but 
Carney for now, me. Now, we have talked a lot about Lammers, so we're going to move it on, and we are going to look ahead to the Guinness series. Uh, first game, It's the temptation is there to already look at the All Blacks, and we will do that a little bit later on, because both of you t guys are going to be picking your team to play the All Blacks. But with Argentina in mind, there will be changes, obviously, and lots of them. Um, we're probably moving from the possibles into the probables uh, for this, this weekend's game. Will we start with the with the back row? Because it it's just incredibly difficult to say, like for sure, who is nailed on. But it looks like, to, for all intents and purposes, that Peter O'Mahony is the only untouchable in that back row. Would that be fair to say? I th yeah, I think so. In uh, I think the front row picks itself. I think the second row in the back row. There's so so much up for grabs, and it's crazy that now after kind of what a lot of these guys have contributed, it's crazy that someone like, so Dan Levy, for example, he was ju he was incredible last season. Obviously won Grand Slam, uh, European Cups. We wouldn't have even got to see how good he was had Josh van der Fleer not picked up the knock in Paris that time. And then we did get to see how good he was and we thought, wow, he's indispensable. And he should be indispensable. And then you look at the rest of the guys there, Sean O'Brien's back from injury. Joe's a massive fan of his. I think he'll go for Sean O'Brien. Uh, Josh is back playing well. Um, but as you Conan. say, Conan. He had a great game. With Jack was br or yeah. he was brilliant at the weekend. Yeah. Would uh, you pick Conan over Sander now? <sighs> or is there a case to be made? Let's put it that way. I, 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 thi I, I think there is a case to be made. He's, he's been playing <laughs> really well with Leinster. He had a, a, gr a, a solid game against Italy. But then that's, that's a second string Italian team. So... And we know that San Sander performs well and that combo with himself and O'Mahony works really well. Like case in point, that last m minute penalty um, that we could see O'Mahony kind of being like, break up that latch and get in. And, you know, sometimes it's nice to have, like people talk a lot about that 9-10 combo. But I think it's important, um, Lou said as well, that you're, you're playing with guys that you know, there's like certain, and there, there seems to be really kind of solid connection there so like I, I think yeah Omani is there even just like line outs exceptional unbelievable leader mm -hmm. and smart decisions even like again like 80th minute being able to like be sharp enough to make that decision so Omani and then I actually it's it's really tough like you can I you can put Cone in there you can put O'Brien in there Van der Feer like there's there's Leaving. I'm so glad it's Joe making the decision yeah. <laughs> like there's, a bit, there's probably a, an element where, where Joe's thinking, right, this is a nightmare at the minute, having to pick someone here. Um, and I wonder, will he get off the hook a little bit because someone will pick up a knock, uh, someone will get injured, someone will be unavailable, uh, and then that might make it an easy decision. And then for us, we're thinking, oh, we, we'll never get to find out who Joe's first like top team are. <coughs> uh, and then that'll be a bit of a shame if that happens because like, it'll, just, it'll, just, it'll make its own mind up or it'll not be an issue in the end. But... At the minute, it's a nightmare. Um, moving to the centre positions, obviously, Jenny, you probably have a particular interest in that yourself from playing it. Um, I mean, what was your what was your take on on the on the combination in the Italy match? I thought they did really well. Second, especially in the second half, we got like quicker rook ball, and we could kind of get it out there and do a little bit more. And um, I thought Ringrose in particular linked really well. Like he did, he did what you want a thirteen to do. Like he he kind of baited and then created space um, outside and inside of him. And he, he, he just looks really good with ball in hand and like again a highly skillful player. But I'd say that Henshaw is, is, is getting that 12 and it's the 13 jersey that's probably more of a battle. Um, and for me at the moment I think Ring Rose probably gets it. Um, Aki had a good game and you've again you've got like Addison who, who can slot in there too. Um, so there's <coughs> Maybe not as much of a, a battle as there is in the the loose forwards, but there is still huge depth there, and like that's a it's a it's a nice problem to have. Yeah, like I mean, Will Addison, you know, he 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 got a run, but maybe didn't get as much of the ball in the ha in hand as he would have liked, per perhaps to make an impact. But like Trimby, I know you're a massive fan of his and what he could potentially do. Yeah, I think he's he's been really good for us for this season, um, and I suppose the thing is he can contribute at fullback and thirteen. Um, Barry's a big fan as well, so he uh, yeah he's definitely in the, in the picture as well. Talking about the the center um, partnerships, but it's crazy that again someone who who made the impact that Bundy Aki made last year played every game in the Grand Slam mm -hmm. contribution, and it's crazy that he's kind of considered second choice. But 
I mean, if, if anybody picks up a knock at all, if Bundy Key goes in there, no problem at all. There's no no drop off in quality, mm. really. I think the only thing is just that the other lads have kind of established more trust, maybe, or uh, established a longer kind of series of just delivering for, for Joe, maybe. And then it's mad, again, that there's so many centres in the conversation, and Stuart McCluskey, who's been probably Ulster's best player of the season, he's not even been talked about. That's how, I suppose, that's how good everybody is, or that's how good the standard is. Uh, in terms of personnel in the centre, but um, yeah, there's there's a lot going on, and I think Joe could could probably do with one or two um, injuries prop, uh, cropping up to to make his decision for him. Um, <coughs> we love talking about ourselves. We're Irish, you know, so like obviously <laughs> a good solid dose of navel gazing. We should probably ask a question about Argentina. Um, Jenny, looking at Argentina, like who should we be looking out for at the weekend? Um, I think a big one for me would be uh, Matera, the <coughs> blindside flanker. I remember. I think he got his he got his first international start in 2012, 2013, something like that. And then Leinster, uh, Leicester Tigers snapped him up straight away. Um, I think Tom Croft had an injury or something, and he did so well. He was with them until the Jaguares kind of joined the Super Rugby, and he's now captaining that team. Huge performer, like an absolute athlete. Cuts really nice lines, really aggressive makes decisions right in the game line. So I think like he would be a big one. And then I think another area that Ireland probably need to look at is like a penalty count was probably a little bit higher um, against Italy than I'd imagine Joe would like. And with someone like Buffelli, the fullback for Argentina, he's an absolutely monster boot. And like he can score, he can score from well in his own half and he can kick under pressure as well. I think he, he made two <laughs> really important kicks against them um, Australia in Australia to win the game. So you've got someone like that. I think you have to be even more wary of you know they can score from they can score from anywhere. Um, Trimby, um, look, we were looking at your record against Argentina. Uh -huh. It's pretty hot, man. Played yeah. for one all four. Guilty. How what? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was? The, how did you? Last week we heard how you beat the All Blacks on your own. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, how was it that you managed to beat Argentina four times in a row again on your own, man, single-handedly? Yeah, I know. Well, you should know the answer to this. You asked him to ask you that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's written right here yeah. on the card. <laughs> you know, I actually think that's not correct. I've been beaten by Argenti Argentina. Oh, definitely. really? Yeah. I okay. think I think in 2007 uh, we we went to Argentina. That was when uh, Eddie O'Sullivan had picked his it kind of established 15 that were going to the World Cup yeah and then the mops as Raj called us we were all going to Argentina on tour before and I think I think we got beat both games <laughs> the mops <laughs> the mops got beat <laughs> yeah and um, sure for Muppets I'm yeah <laughs> okay, yeah I okay. mean just had to standard abbreviation had to double check yeah. okay uh and I think um Jordy Murphy um missed a drop goal right at the end and we lost the game there's me slagging Jordy Murphy again. Yeah, yeah. He, he already hates me. <laughs> get in, get into <laughs> yeah. him, yeah. <laughs> Please, Jordy, answer my calls. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think we lost that game. Anyway, I uh, yeah, so 2014 we went and we beat them twice over there. And I then picked up a yellow card. I was Joe Schmidt's first ever yellow card. I broke his, yeah. Congratulations, Trimby. It's just the fame. fame, to fame yeah. Whatever. Um, yeah, so I got a bit of a hard time for that. Um, but did my bit and... Um, yeah, Argentina is always tough, very tough. Last year, they beat them at the Ireland beat them at the Aviva. I think the difference between so they they beat South Africa, hammered South Africa, and then the difference between the South Africa game and the Argentina game was equally as good a performance from an Irish perspective. But um, I think Argentina are just used to digging in because they play New Zealand uh, every couple of weeks, Australia, South Africa. They're used to kind of getting a hard time that they can dig in, whereas South Africa just went out the gate, and I think that. Is kind of what's going to make this test, you know, a proper a proper arm wrestle, a proper difficult um, hurdle for this Irish team to get over because they won't go out the gate. They'll dig in, they'll fight, and they'll make it a a battle. Um, I tell you what's a heel move, Jenny, is to give a, give someone a question to ask them about how Im yeah. impressive you are, but then is to give you a false uh, a false stat then and then call you on it. That's a yeah. real heel That's move. Signed. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a real yeah. heel move well. there. Just on the yellow card, Trimby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just to I'm go back to you uh, and <laughs> yeah, messing yeah. up there, Trimble. Yeah, yeah. What did did like what was Joe's reaction to your your yellow his first yellow card? 
Yeah, and he was very proud of his record before yeah, of before I Un ruined it. Unblemished. Yeah, unblemished. Mm -hmm. now, it, now it's blemished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Joe actually didn't say much about it. I did get a hard time from Rory about it. Rory would be probably the player equivalent of Joe in that he knows his stuff and very little will get by him. Um, so yeah, I got a hard time from him. In some ways, it's not nice getting a hard time from Joe, but I'd nearly rather get a hard time from Joe than Rory. It, it's equally as unpleasant. Really? Yeah. And is that like... He's, so a, he's a bully. He's a bully. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And where does that, like, does that happen like in a dressing room or back in the team hotel or in a team meeting? Or is it one-on-one? -on -one? No, it won't be one-on-one. Or is, on it, one. is, he, it, a, he, he is it a side fan moment? Yeah, he won't waste a good slag one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. He'll save that for a crowd. Okay. Definitely no, that would have been done in a crowd. <laughs> Um, just on the on the I suppose again looking at the Guinness series, um, before we before we leave it, Joey Carberry had like a, again it's kind of forgotten maybe not forgotten but it's not as prominent because of incredible performance from Ty Byrne and Jordan Lammer they're kind of eating up all the column inches. That's where the media are going, Trinity, yeah. obviously. Um, <laughs> that's where you guys are going. That's where that's where we're. I'm we're, not there, mate. You're, right, you're in. You're me in the Jenny, game, man. Me and Jenny are there. Um, like two games coming up against Argentina and New Zealand, two big tests. Would you like to see Carberry get like a solid 15, 20 minutes in one of those games to show what he can do? Yeah, I, I mean, mm. it, am I right in saying his first cap was New Zealand in Chicago? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he came off the bench and straight away, his first touch of the ball, he made a big impact. Mm -hmm. So he, he's a confident young fella. He's not that young anymore, I suppose, but he's, he's very talented, very gifted very confident and he kind of just comes in, does the right thing. He set up um, that break up the left hand side, Zebo put it over the full back, then we got the scrum and we scored off the scrum. So he made a big impact in that mm -hmm. game. And that was his first uh, encounter with international rugby. So he's uh, more than capable of closing out a test match. He has like you beating the All Blacks. He was, he, there was there. he was there when I beat the All Blacks. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he, won't be, he won't be in any way intimidated. Uh, Carberry, uh, we'll be getting to your team shortly, but definitely worth 20 minutes oh 100 percent yeah like i think it's what like for this the november test as well i th think you mentioned it earlier it's you want guys to get game time going mm -hmm. into six nations and world cup like who is who's going to be our second choice nine is a big one and you know maybe ireland like do really well in structured play all the time and like how do we kind of i think we need to like how do we play maybe looser as well so i think there's like loads of things that Joe's probably thinking about already to, to do and like to nail down that second nine position and stuff and also the ten as well. Like and, and as well as that it's a thing like if, if Sexton takes a, a knock, I think even a year, two years ago would be like, oh God. Mm -hmm. And now it's like it's crap. It would be crap, but it's still like <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Like this is fine. Like I think you'd be quite confident and like no Joey knows what he's doing. It's it's yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Depth. it's relative crap. It's slightly less crap. <laughs> Isn't yeah, it? it's relative crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're, we've got really talented fellas coming through. Again, as we say, Jordan Larmer, Will Addison, covering 15. Again, not certainly not the end of the world. There's a lot of talent coming through there, a lot of ability. As you say, Joey uh, Carberry comes through at 10. If something happens, uh, Johnny Sexton, heaven forbid. We're still in pretty good shape. Just okay. that. I don't even know if that's wood, but yeah. <laughs> it's MDF, but we can, it's Grand, as good yeah. as wood. We can MDF. Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is no wood. It is all, it's all uh, whatever, you know, imitation. It's all cheap. It's all cheap it's stuff. All, yeah. Yeah. It's all imitation. Yeah. Except sure. the couch, which is exceedingly comfortable. Ah, yeah, yeah. 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 Even if and the it's microphones are very good quality as they well. Are. I they think are. because the show has been so successful. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we got an extra little bit of budget. Now we got these. Uh, well, Madonna, actually, Madonna no, Madonna you, you're not you watching. You have the two expensive ones. that couldn't afford the third one, or else they were like, "It's going to get lost in her hair." So let's give her the cheapies. <laughs> we so. only got two. Th okay, that's okay, that's but we're going to have two more next week, apparently. Okay, nice. Yeah, if you're not watching on YouTube and you're wondering what the hell's going on, Trimby and I are wearing the uh, Britney Spears standard issue head head mics. Brit, uh, you you're very happy about it as well. You're I'm doing some very of that pleased, Britney yeah. uh, shoulder. Yeah. Movement earlier on. Slave for you, that kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty impressive, I, feel I like have to say. We're not dressed sexily enough to wear these <laughs> microphones. Both wearing check shirts, which is. Which you you got to be. Yeah. You and Baz are presumed check wardrobes before every show. Would that be right? To no, say? no. I leave Don't. the house at five o'clock in the morning. Okay. I, I put on the first thing I find, as you can tell. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's looking good, man. It's looking good. <laughs> um, see, that's it. He needs positive reinforcement. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just yeah. keep. I give, I give totally. you an opportunity there, yeah. <laughs> and you didn't jump yeah. in. It's not like you've thrown it together. It's yeah. like you're really yeah. well yeah. put together. That was that was a, a less Again. blatant version yeah. of okay. Do you yeah. like the show yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. I give you earlier? <laughs> 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 it, it, for those uh, not watching on YouTube, it's a it's a it's a cheeky uh, blue check on pink, which is uh, pushing it out there, Trimby. Yeah. Tries, uh, but hey, it works. It works. Uh, so center. Well, let's oh move God, on we, to. We could be sports, recreation, and fashion. I know this is it. Well, this is it, Jenny. Yeah. This is it. Okay, let's move on to to some rugby. Uh, and let's look at your teams that you've picked to face the mighty All Blacks in uh, a couple of weeks' time. So, uh, Jenny, will we start with your team? Go for it. Okay. Um, again, <laughs> if you're not watching on YouTube, you're just going to have to visualize it in your mind's eye. Okay. So, Jenny, do you want to first of all maybe just just take us through your team. I've got it here. Cool. Take us through your team and tell <coughs> us, give us a line on each one and as to maybe some of the more the more contentious uh, positions, tell us why you went for that person. Uh, well, for Keen Healy, uh, would be my uh, number one in that position. Uh, just like, he's been playing unbelievable. Even like last year's, he's just really mobile. He's changed his game a little bit. And yeah, I think he's got that number one jersey for me. Um, wasn't sure if, if Rory Best was was going to be available, so that's why he's not on uh, he's not on my list. But Who I did you go for? I went for uh, Sean Cronin. Okay. Uh, just, yeah, Easy trim. You'll get your chance. You'll get your chance. Is yeah. Sean okay. Cronin captain the, the team as well? Um, I don't I don't I don't think he is. No. There's an undertone to that, no. Jenny. Keep going. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, choosing we'll, to disregard we'll, it. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, I just, we'll come to his team like, in a second. Yeah, Keep yeah. going. Uh, Tyg Furlong. Okay. Uh, in tight heads, yeah. uh, he's just like nailed yeah. that position. Uh, four, I've gone for, I've gone for Ty Byrne. Okay. Just like he's been consistently putting in huge performances. Yeah. Um, oh, this like this, it's so hard from four to like it's. I was like James Ryan or Ian Henderson. I genuinely couldn't. That you was pick. Really, like yeah. Come oh, on, Jenny. Pick. Oh, like, Henderson, I'll go for Henderson. Yeah. Is okay. it just because Trimby's sitting beside you now? And yeah, well, I'm afraid he's going to ask me like, oh, like how Why much? Why have of you a, not picked the Ulster man in that particular scenario? No, he's just like he's an absolute force to be reckoned with. Um, he like such a physical player. Yeah. Um, not that James Ryan isn't. Uh, they're just kind of different. Um, Peter Romani six. Okay. Sean O'Brien seven. CJ Sander eight. Um. Luke McGrath, 9, Johnny Sexton, 10, Stockdale, 11, Henshaw, 12, Ringrose, 13, Keith Earls in there at 14, and Rob Kearney in fullback. Okay, great stuff. Uh, Trimby, do you want to give your team? For okay. the, this, is, this is Andrew Trimble's <coughs> team to face the mighty All Blacks. Now, now, again, this is Andrew Trimble's team. This is my the predicted team that I think Joe is going to select. Sorry, this isn't your team then. This is, this is Joe's team. This is yeah the team that I predict Joe is going to select. Oh okay. Is that fair enough? Is that? That's fine. That's, that's fine. fine. Is that He's what we're doing? Isn't we, it? Yeah. We, we gave you a fairly <laughs> loose brief, and this yeah. is how you yeah. choose to interpret. Okay, yeah. Fine. Keen Healy, Rory Best for me, um, an established performer, um, a leader, captain of the side. I think. I think uh, there's a lot of talent there. A lot of guys went on tour and did really well. Sean Cronin included. Um, serious athlete, serious talented operator, but for me, Rory Best. He's going to get that spot. Tyke Furlong, uh, Ian Henderson, James Ryan. Uh, that's actually not what I picked. <laughs> I've got this written in front of me. I'm going to go for Ian <laughs> Henderson and uh, Devin Toner just because I feel like um, just possession, the line out, as line out stats, Dev is going to get you that guaranteed, no problem. And then you get a bit of impact off James Ryan off the bench. Um, O'Mahony, Sean O'Brien, CJ Stander. And at nine, I've gone for Kieran Marmion. Uh, and easily could go with um, Cooney, Luke McGrath as well, no problem. But the reason I've gone for Marmion is just because I think he'll play this weekend. And if he goes well against Argentina, then I think he's, he's set up and he's teed up nicely to, to start against the All Blacks. Um, Sexton, Stockdale, uh, Robin Hen Robbie Henshaw, Ringrose, Earls and Carney. Yeah. Okay. The rest of the back line picks it. Okay. okay. It's really interesting um, to see where you've differed. I suppose... We won't get into the Sean Cronin and Rory Best debate. You see, and probably I think the thing with Sean Cronin that probably works against him, he's huge off the bench. Like impact, he, unbelievable. Like yeah, it's just his turn of pace is like I'm jealous of his turn of pace. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that you're aligned on pretty much 
you're not aligned obviously um, on scrum half, but you're aligned on your on the back selection. Um, other than that, uh, Marmion against McGrath is an interesting one, and we said we'd earlier on we mentioned that we would get stuck into that. Jenny, you've gone for Luke McGrath. Andrew, you've gone for Kieran, Kieran Marmion. Uh, Jenny, why why Luke McGrath? I think like Andrew said, there could there's you could put any of them in there and they're able to do a job. Like I'd love to see Cooney um, play a little bit, like get a solid couple minutes um, against Argentina. But I went with McGrath because he's he's just a really solid, scrappy performer. He's played with Sexton. They they, they know each other well. I think which counts a lot. And obviously, Marmion has played Test rugby and stuff too. But like the, I think the amount of time, the numbers of when Sexton played with Marmion, they're not. It's not huge caps they've played together for long periods of time. Um, and then I thought that McGrath, especially in the second half um, against Italy, did really well. He's just consistent again and solid. He, do, he doesn't seem to make many errors and he seems to be kind of working the forwards and stuff. And he really controlled the tempo a lot better in the second half than I thought the first, which is a bit fractured and that's nothing on him. It was just kind of messy, messier at the breakdown. So yeah, went with went with McGrath. But again, like you can, you can put... Cooney or Marmion in there too and yeah. they'll do a job. I think this is going to be the friendliest debate we ever have because we're sort of going, it could be Luke, it could be Cooney, yeah. it could be Marmion, no problem. I think you're you're getting to the point where you're just kind of putting your finger in there and sort, sort of saying, it's probably going to be Marmion for me, mm. just because he has to play this weekend because he hasn't got any game time at all. If he plays, then he's just in, a, in good shape to kick on and play against the All Blacks. Um, Luke, you'd imagine, won't start this weekend. And then, again, just like for like, if you play well against Argentina, it's such it's it's a way bigger impact than playing well against Italy. Kind of yeah. seconds. And do you think do you think that um, the fact that Joe has picked Marmion before and knows what he's able to do that like yeah. probably and he, he's talked about that as well a couple of times. So was it was it England? I think it was when Marmion got selected went really well. Yeah. Uh, and then the other time, strangely, which is an unusual one, uh, Marmion came off the bench to cover uh, the wing, actually, oh, yeah. <coughs> against Australia. And like um, tackled Pocock a couple of times, kind of got up, contested a couple of high balls, did a really good job. And I think Joe just thinks that's a guy who can dig in and do a good job for me. And I know it's, it's strange to say, well, that doesn't really correlate to controlling the game at nine, but still it shows a lot about a guy's kind of mindset and character and Joe trusts him. Yeah. Um, I think we've run out of time for this part, which is a shame because there's still lots more to discuss. And even I think even just to quickly mention, you've at lock, you've picked Jenny. You went with Ty Byrne, James Ryan, or Ian Henderson. You've gone with Ian Henderson. And whilst you say that you wrote, wrote down Devon Toner, I, I think you may have written down James Ryan somewhere else as well. But it's what's interesting is that <laughs> there is just it's very difficult to say this is definitely going to be your four and five, and there's so many different combinations that we could play with there. All right, let's leave it there. Um, we will stick the, both those teams up on sportsjoe.ie if you want to check them out and disagree with them or agree with them <laughs> or whatever else. And we'll be back after this. Pat McCarry is going to be here with the House of Rugby rugby roundup if you're watching this then you are a big fan of baz and andrew's house of rugby on joe uh, and that's not surprising everybody's watching the show but what we're doing now is we're taking the show on the road so we are going to the guinness open gate brewery on the 14th of november to talk about the big one the all blacks game we're being joined by all the big names jerry flannery conrad smith james lowe is going to join us and do a high five tutorial so join us that night All right, we're joined on the couch now by Sports Joe's Pat McCarry, uh, also known as Proddy Pat because he's producer, and also known as Pat the Stat McCarry as well because he's get fifty percent of my stats right all uh, the time. Pat, thanks for that curveball there, that that <laughs> hospital pass in uh, with the Argentina stat. Yeah, you did lose to Argentina in two thousand and seven. You did. Um, say. This is where we round up, Pat. Where are we going to start? Well, there's only one place to start. Um, Last week, House of Rugby UK, um, they were chatting a little bit about Phil Trimble over here. Um, but when they moved off that, uh, Mike Tyndall was on the set and he, as a World Cup winner himself, was asked to kind of assess Ireland. And Alex Payne was asking, you know, if they're the second, you know, are these guys the challengers for the All Blacks? And Mike wasn't convinced at all and tried not to say anything too bad about Ireland, but then just opened his mouth and a lot of bad stuff came out. So we can hear it here. My issue with Ireland is I'm not sure they'll ever 
do well at a World Cup with the rugby they play currently. Okay. Um, you look at the Six Nations that you go back to, if you go back to the Six Nations, um, they could have lost three of their games. I know they didn't, Yeah. but Scotland should have, in my book, should have beaten them with the three tries they absolutely butchered on two on ones. Johnny Sexton's drop goal. Yeah, Johnny Sexton, Hail Mary. In, in, in France, you know, that pass goes a different way in the Wales game. He makes a read. If he gets that wrong, goes over the top. You know, we talk yeah. about Stockdale and making that read and, and what we talk about defenders doing. Um, I thought the way that people got round them, I actually thought Australia would go really well against them because of how they defend and yeah. how easily the Six Nations teams got round the outside of them. Um, and I know they've, they make probably the most passes in of out of any team in world rugby, but they're all one out runners and they just, how many times does the forward score compared to how many times does the back score in terms of it? You know, Stockdale, most of their back strides are intercepts. Yeah. So, but at the same, in the same You're doing breath, them down for the number yeah, two well, team in the no, world. I mean, <laughs> I'm doing them down, but then I'm going to say, but what they do do, they are outstanding at. Yeah. In terms of everything they do, the way they um, break down teams in terms of where they're going to attack into the inside balls and the way they then deliver their game plans on a match day and and, and stick to them gets them those results yeah but i always believe a team can beat them which uh which is weird because they don't yeah. <laughs> but but that i think they are just great at uh, at getting results yes now do they always play out of their skin no but they always they get the job win. done and the irish are always you know you go back to soldier fields when they beat new zealand if you give an irish team something to play for yeah you, you yes. know they are that's when they become unbeatable because i don't know what's what they have inside them but when they, they have a reason to win a game yeah they always seem to get it done spoil an english party they're brilliant at that yeah pat um i don't know what's the worst part of that but when he went into trimby's defeat of the all Phil. blacks <laughs> phil's yeah phil yeah. trimble's yeah <laughs> defeat of the all Blacks. I, I i mean just how dare he go there he it, he almost in summation he says Okay, they they beat the All Blacks. Yeah. Okay, they win regular Six Nations championships and Grand Slams. Okay, they beat Australia in a mm -hmm. uh, three match test series, but they're not that good. To me, that's, that's not really good enough. I think he's just he, he doesn't want to like Ireland, but he concedes that we're really good and mm -hmm. we're consistent performers. Um, I think he 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 rambles a little. He did. He he was trying to. He kept on several occasions trying to bring it back around, and then <laughs> no, nope, his just yeah. that latent, <laughs> yeah. latent disregard for yeah. Ireland just could not be beaten. I love the line where he just says like, "If you give them something to play for, they're unbeatable." And you're like, <laughs> "But they're not going to do well in a World Cup." Like he's like, well, "Isn't winning a World Cup something to play for as well?" Like yes. I like that. Oh yeah, sure they get results. I'm like, but that's what we want. <laughs> that's not, what not, they want. Not just the next World Cup, any World Cup. They any will, World Cup, we're done. It's yeah. It's not going to yeah. happen for Ireland at any World Cup. Yeah. The next one or any future World Cup. And uh, what was it he said? Um, Sure, they make more passes than any other team in international rugby, but they're not very good passes, or they're one-out <laughs> passes. <laughs> for me. I mean, come on, <laughs> stop this. Anyway. These are our, these are our, our, our colleagues, as, of course. So Mike Tindall is our is our colleague. So we should probably is he pull it back around a little bit and just say, <laughs> I mean, he's uh, he's achieved a lot in the game, Pat. You good know, player, he's, yeah. he's done he's done a lot. I think he's royal. He's, he he's is royal. he is the Queen's. Grandson-in-law is yeah. that is that was that right right to say Grant's pretty so is, good. Is he, is he reflecting the royals, but just is he reflecting sure, the views of the entire royal family? I, 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 potentially, potentially yeah. that's 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 <laughs> where they're coming in on. Um, I the think Queen thinks we pass too much. Probably that's <laughs> yeah. I think that's where that's what we're, we're alluding to, Jenny. Um, it's interesting. Most Irish people, their hackles raise when they hear those five words, which. My issue with Ireland is that is how we opened it. So and Im immediately we're all on the back foot. It's like, whoa, where are you going with this? What are you trying to say? But unfortunately, he didn't make much more sense um, as he went on. Pat. <laughs> I love that, yeah, as well. Like just the Irish thing is like, and then sharing it with all your mates and like, get ready to get offended. This is class. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be the what J Joe Smith pins on the dressing room. Yeah. This is what Mike Tyndall <laughs> thinks of you guys. Yeah. Um, but it's still, it's still, uh, it's still interesting that there is still that sort of. I think for Ireland, there's still a lot of doubt about how good they are and what they've achieved, given everything that they've done. That it is interesting that 
in, in rugby circles outside of Ireland that there's still that sort of, well, second best team in the world on paper, but not in reality. That, yeah. That's out there, isn't it? I think it just will take a long time for that to kind of be drilled into the mindset of, of people not, not here. Even for us, it's difficult for us to get our heads around this is how good we are. We are the second best team in the world. That's a foreign concept to us mm. and we've got to get used to that because traditionally we only play well whenever we're the, we're the underdogs and everybody writes us off and then now, now we're getting better at coping with that. Um, and uh, if it takes us time, it'll certainly take them across the water more time. Pat, rough weekend for Luke Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Um, good win for Wales. Hugh Jones missed a couple of tackles for Scotland so Gregor Townsend was dragging him out over the coals in the media as well, throughout, which I'm sure he won't appreciate at all. But uh, yeah, Luke Morgan made his debut on the wing and didn't get a touch of the ball, didn't get his hands on the ball in the first half at all. And it was 53 minutes before he finally got the ball in attack. So I was just kind of thinking for a winger, you're on your debut, your family are probably up in the, in the your mates are up there. That lad who is loving that pint is up there. <laughs> the national yeah, yeah. Is up there. And everybody's watching you and you're just, you cannot, the ball is not coming your way. Like, it was just going to, maybe for Andrew, like, or even Jenny, like, how tough is that? Like, you want to get involved early and how tough is that when you're kind of out there and the ball is not coming your way? Yeah, try playing outside Rob Carney. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just balancing things up because I was talking about all, yeah, yeah, yeah. all show and just, just bringing them back down. Good save. Yeah, that's journalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, balancing doing very well. <laughs> But yeah, just like uh, geez, his head must be melted. He ended up kind of made a couple of tackles, but I think he only ended up with two carries. Like so, you know, does he give Gatlin the shout and say, "I didn't get a chance"? Like you know, because I was even watching the Ireland game again, and Conway didn't get to do much and attack either. Like so, your your head must be melted. Aren't sometimes you supposed to go and get the ball though if you're been uh, frozen out? Like is that not that's a easier thing? said than done? <laughs> yeah. Jenny, are you when you see a winger crabbing in, you're like, hey, stay out in your wing. Don't, don't. You're in my, you're in my zone here. Well, like yeah, like so. I like you were looking at it. Some the way some teams play, they you need to get that width. Like so, Chris Ashton, first time back in England jersey in like four years, yeah. and he from from looking at that game, he was given free license to come in, um, come in, kind of like nearly do what he wants, and he 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 set up some really nice plays with his first touch, but then. You know that's that's England and that's Chris Ashton and it's a little bit different and it's hard like even maybe not so much at th at thirteen as winger but like sometimes you're just <coughs> like freezing watching the forwards do all the work and you're like oh my god I'm not doing anything but like you're you're meant to be doing your job and if your job is to hold that width or kind of like make those important tackles out there fine so be it sometimes it's a crappy day yeah and you just have to kind of sit there and keep your jersey pristine so yeah you always hear commentators say that um that he's come in off his wing as if like that 15 channel that is your jurisdiction stay in the 15 mate what yeah. are you doing why why are you over here he's come in off his wing but i mean that's that's not the way that's not the way it works you to, to an extent, you kind of forget the number on your back when you're out there and you're in phase play and you just try and get involved as much as possible. Mm. Uh, how does it happen that you don't touch a ball for 53 minutes? It's bizarre, isn't it? It is, but it's probably more common at, at, at test level because it can be a little bit of an arm wrestle, it can be a little yeah. bit less space and then um, quite often teams will think you've got to soften them up first before you kind of express yourself and, and play with width. And sometimes those long long passes with the amount of line speed in, in international rugby, you know, can get picked off or guys get hit behind the game line. And it's not worth it. So that's why often the way to get into the game as a winger at that level is either chasing kicks, contesting the air, or getting up and making hits. Um, Pat, I think I know which way the wind is blowing, but the results of our Guinness made of more player of the weekend. Um, just to mention, yeah, that there were other people involved in this. I vote. was going yeah. to say, I was, <laughs> was going to start. Who, uh, other than Jordan Lammer, was up for this? Yeah, um, Stuart McCloskey, g big game um, for Ulster. They they won away uh, to Treviso. All the Irish provinces won. Um, the other one I put in, I think Tom Farrell was was up for as well. But I put Jemison Gibson Park in, and then Tyg Burney with a great game as well. But landslide for Jordan Larmer, so he's the, he's their player of the weekend. Okay. Um, I think we can all I we can all agree, yeah, Andrew. That's well deserved, isn't we've it? We've talked enough about you. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it there. All right. Well, moving on to our hashtag Ask H O R. So um, the questions have been flooding in. It's fair to say, uh, Pat. Where do we start? Yeah. Does um, one? I think we could. There was a 
a lot of people send stuff in and we've covered a lot of it in the show, like talk about Cooney and talk about the back row and stuff like that and who played centre. So hopefully you've covered most of that during the show. Uh, the one I thought was interesting was from uh, Tony down under. He wanted to know if Joe Schmidt, he's supposed to make his mind up about is he going to stay on as Ireland coach and let us all know by the end of the month. So if he is to leave after World Cup, who would you like to see replace him? Good singer there, Trimbic. What do you reckon? Um, it'd be difficult to know who, who potentially could be available at the time. Someone like Mark McCall, he's going on with well. Mm -hmm. Saracens could be in the mix. Whoever it is will have massive shoes to fill. Um, this morning, Paddy, you've replaced Barry. And I would imagine the new coach will feel a similar level mm -hmm. of expectation and pressure mm -hmm. that you've felt this morning. So you might maybe you might maybe brief the new coach mm -hmm. on how to cope with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's an analogy you like. Three times in one show, so yeah. so and so's got big yeah. boots to fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I they know. call that a crutch yeah. in the game, man. Yeah. The journalism By game. That's called a, a crutch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had to move away from that. I'm new, I'm new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. You're doing well. Positive reinforcement. Probably um, like yeah. Stuart Lancaster for yeah. me. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just because like, the way you hear some of the Leinster guys chat about what he's done and, and you know, I think the enjoyment that he seems to like bring to the game, like they're, does it, like he's, he talks so much about culture and, and that World Cup squad mm -hmm. with England, they seem to like, you know, really mm -hmm. enjoy it and relish it. And like, I think that that can be, obviously love Joe to say, but um, I think Stuart Lancaster with what he's done with Leinster has been unbelievable and you know he's already in the country so. yeah and he knows he knows the routine yeah. as well Pat it's interesting that uh, the RFU are talking about are beginning to rattle sabres and talk about you know the plan it can't be built around one person yeah, Philip yeah. Brown said that a couple of weeks ago um, but it is difficult to imagine life without <laughs> Joe Smith it's fair to say yeah oh like it's just uh, anybody you know who's just played under him has just said like the, the changes he's made are, are unbelievable I, I wrote something before it's like it's almost an acceptance in Ireland that oh, he's going to go he's going to go back and take the old black job but I was saying if there's any carrot that we can offer him and uh, we'd have to get in touch with him about it and I'm sure the IRFU have but like if he, if he could be offered the Lions job it might make him stick around like you know right. and, and for, for the next World Cup maybe so um like he has to be the favourite for the Lions job as well. Like, but um, if they could do that, that'd be great. But uh, yeah, th th there's this secession plan with Farrell and Easterby there, kind of, and let the two of them boys fight it out and see who wants to take over. Um, yeah, so th you know that, that that's my take on it. There, Lions coach and get to hang around, get to stick around for an extra few years. Like, um, and then the the other one we got there was uh, this one. We were, we actually do take in video ask HOR questions as well. Hashtag so ask <coughs> HOR, brilliant stuff. Yeah. So this one came in from uh, some sexy boy Baz um, fourteen, <laughs> I think was his handle here, and he's uh, on on a nice little uh, a beach, and he's looking pretty tanned. Here it is. Hello, Baz and Andrews House of Rugby featuring Jenny Murphy. Welcome to Doha. The sun is shining here, it's beautiful, but I have a question for you today, and that is, by 2019, I'm hoping that uh, science has taken a massive leap and we can genetically modify or even clone current players. Uh, so I'm wondering if you could clone one current player in the Irish team for the World Cup, who would you clone? And then second question is, if you could genetically modify a former player, like swap his brain out or make him like young again, what player would you bring back from the past to include him in the World Cup? Thank you. Have a great time. Uh, Barry Murphy, uh, sexy, sexy boy, Baz 14. Sexy boy, Baz 14, Not yes. that away at all, <laughs> and his incredibly large feet. Um, Trimby, you weren't, um, you weren't emotional during that, were you? Were you okay? No, I you feel a little right? bit, it's fine, it's fine. You don't miss him too much. No, it'll be okay. It'll okay, be okay. grand. Um, just busy. I just have to stay busy. <laughs> you stay busy, man. Stay busy, and so you are staying busy today. So I don't get down. Yeah, uh -huh. we're keeping your keeping <coughs> your mind on the job here. What do you reckon of the so first question? First of all, dramatic improvements in um, medical um, science, I suppose. Um, what was the second one? Bringing the brain of the brain someone. of a player back. Okay, yeah. so for me, this slightly um, like not exactly the question he's asking, but for me. I'm thinking like um, Ryan Reynolds in Wolverine, where you've got the brain of Joe Schmidt, you've got the lower body of Marcel Coetzee, and you've got the upper body of um, Cipriani. Wow. Not much of a kicking game. No. <laughs> Maybe you could give him someone's legs. Huh? What? Lower, <laughs> did you say whose who's lower body was it? Marcel Coetzee. Oh, see sorry. Okay, yeah. right. So okay. those are legs for carrying, not kicking. Yeah, of course, yeah. But yeah, I think the rest, the rest of them is pretty handy. So that's your Frankenstein. That's sort of part two. And part one, that's kind of it all answered. 
Okay, fine. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a hell That's of an solid. answer. Are we in a rush? <laughs> Jenny, uh, I, I'm like, I wish I went first. So I'm not going to top that answer. Like, oh. so what? Well, let's start with the genetically modified. Who are we going to clone? Well, I, I kind of was thinking about it. So like, everyone, like loads of the Irish players have had their chance, and you know, you relish all your caps. I would have loved to seen um, Owen O'Malley play a little bit more. Yeah, of course. Um, so I think if we clone him, injury free and stuff, and see see him in the centre, that would have been. I would have really liked to see a love watch and play with Leinster. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Like, uh, that would be my pick. And then in terms of like head, torso, leg, I'm like, I can't think off the cut. Like, into, oh, I think maybe Jared Payne up top, head wise, just defensively unbelievable. Uh, Wolverine's a good shout. Might just go, oh, like, I don't know. I'm going to just stick Jared Payne. Jared Payne, the whole, the whole Bain, of Jared Payne. Head brain. No, 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 hold on, no, I can't. I'm just brain and then like any really strong superhero bottom half. Okay. Yeah. Solid, yeah. yeah. See the what dry wit of Jared Payne, the winning <laughs> smile of yeah. Stuart McCloskey, yeah, the, yeah. the hands of Brian O'Driscoll. Yeah. This is the gloves of Brian O'Driscoll. The shoulder the to wrist of, An of Phil Trimble. Yeah, like, yeah, that's it. Wingspan, that's what you get with that. Just gigantic. I thought we were out of time. <laughs> oh, we are done. actually out of time. Listen, uh, it's, been, it's been emotional. Thanks for it to say. Jenny, thank you so much for joining us. We really that's appreciate right. it. Good luck with the rehab on the knee. We're looking forward to seeing you back in an Irish jersey. The uh, ladies team are playing, it's the 18th and 24th. Yeah, so they're playing at the USA in Energia Park, yep. and then they're over in Twickenham, double header to play English. Will you be heading over? Um, I won't. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be watching it uh, from New York. I'm, okay. head, I'm heading over to New York for. Excuse me. Yeah. Blah, NFL. Blah, yeah. Andrew, you can give us some tips after the show on what American football is. You could. You probably listen to that. I know you're a big fan of the show. Uh, yeah, huge. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, massive. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah, it's a back reference. Yeah. yeah. Um, Andrew Trimble, thank you very much. Thanks for having part me. of your own show, uh -huh. Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby. <laughs> thanks, Baz. And uh, Praddy Pat. And thanks to the team here for putting the show together. And thanks to you for all your comments, for your questions, for listening and for watching on YouTube and for subscribing on your podcast app. If you haven't already done that, click subscribe. And we don't even need to hassle you any week. It'll just drop seamlessly into your feed every Monday afternoon, which is which is the way to do it, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's, it's simple and straightforward. Thanks to all the team here for making the show. This has been Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby on Joe, together with Guinness. We'll see you again.